Nibula, methangu nimi lote na isaro tumboa. Na makiao minarua kinaona na vya kavi muniti kina vaka rambuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vya vaka barota kini ndreko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na wongani vya niano. Ngai na makiao kina. Aki shadi hone wali hai. Panch panch bachche honge. Panch panch. Panch panch. हाय मैं हूँ आपकी सहेली वेनु सुनते रहिए मैं छह से मैं हूँ ना नौ से बारह बजे तक On FBC News tonight, new winners crowned the 2013 Courts IDC. Bar Museum to be relocated and fire leaves two families homeless. Bolovinaka and welcome to FBC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. In a heated up affair and extra time, Bar is this year's court's inter-district championship winners. Abdu Abu Zahid scored the winning goal after both sides were drawn one all at full time. Avinesh Swami was the man in black's okay. first hero after he scored the equalizer from a penalty. More in sports to follow. Deputy Director General of the European Commission's Directorate General for Development Corporation, EuropeAid, Marcus Conaro, arrived into the country today. Conaro is here to discuss the priority areas for future European Union Fiji Development Corporation under the 11th European Development Fund, for the period 2014 to 2020. It's understood Conaro met this afternoon with a delegation from the Suva office for a briefing ahead of his planned meetings, which begin tomorrow. Conaro is also here to take part in the African, Caribbean and Pacific or ACP Ministerial Conference on Sugar in Singatoka. Next week in Suva, Fiji and the European Union will hold for the first time for several years a high-level political dialogue. After much talk, a decision has been made to relocate the Colonial Sugar Refinery Museum complex in Ba. Ba Special Administrator Praveen Bala says the $150,000 museum will be moved to another part of the town as it's built on top of the town's main sewage and water systems. Akusita Tale has the story. The decision to relocate the museum is to benefit the town and its people. And clarification has been made the museum will not be destroyed. One must understand that uh, the place where the museum was built, we have got main water supply pipes running underneath. Bala says he has been informed by the public water department that two main pipes, a 10-inch and a 4-inch bypass, are running beneath the museum. The sewerage department has also confirmed a pipe running underneath the fence. It is very important uh, to keep all those places clear because if it bursts, the pipe bursts, then the PWD needs uh, a clear way to come and do the maintenance. The CSR museum located from the Tavua end will be moved to the Bar Central complex before it is officially opened. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Two families are homeless following separate fire incidences yesterday. The first incident was recorded in Savuna Y Stage 2 in Vutwa Levu Nandi, where a two-bedroom concrete and corrugated iron lean-to house was destroyed. The house belonging to a 40-year-old taxi driver was vacant at the time of the incident. Attempts to extinguish the fire was unsuc unsuccessful. The cause of fire is yet to be established, with cost of damage estimated at $20,000. The second incident happened in the Eastern Division. The house of a 50-year-old farmer of Nasaimbitu village was destroyed. The house was vacant at the time and the cause of the fire is believed to have been from a kerosene lantern which was left unattended. The cost of damage is estimated at $5,000. The Rambi and Kiribati community are confident that their culture and tradition are very much intact and alive. 
This after they performed an emotional traditional welcome for Archbishop Peter Lloyd Chong at Nandera yesterday. A Rambi and Kiribati chiefly welcome for Archbishop Peter Lloyd Chong, his first visit to parishioners at Nandera in Nasuno. As part of tradition and to maintain its sacredness, the dancers camped together for three weeks and practiced in the wee hours of the morning. When they woke up at uh, 4.30 or 5, and they started uh, bath, start uh, using the first water. They do the practice in the morning from 4.30, say 5 to 6 o'clock. The dancers also abstained from eating meat during the period. Because of the weight, because uh, we have just seen, they are so lively. This mixture of biblical and traditional performance caught the parishioners astounded, even the Archbishop himself. You only see that in the Bible. I think the Kribas people must be somewhere from Israel or somewhere. <laughs> from in front of the Archbishop, I felt uh, really blessed to show my identity and my culture. It's very much alive uh, in our community in Dangiri. We've been performing in school, sometimes in churches. The Archbishop was served with a special dinner. The ingredients were specially ordered from Rambi Island near Vano level. I was so moved. I think it was such a very sincere performance by the Kiribati community. And to be welcoming him in Nandera for the first time, I, I, I was really very moved. I think it's awesome. It's just the way they um, welcome the chief guest in the manner that they uh, have to do the washing of the feet and uh, the utensils that they use for eating. They were using every part of the uh, coconut tree and uh, nowadays we are promoting that. I think uh, all that has happened yesterday, the welcome ceremony by the Rambi and Kiribati uh, community, it was a new experience, totally new for me. Archbishop Peter Loy will spend the next few months visiting his flock around the country. Mikolonga, FBC News. The head of the Catholic Church in Fiji, Archbishop Peter Loy Chong, has warned young men and women of the church to be wary of our world, which purports to be officially neutral in matters of religion. Archbishop Peter Loy made the statement at the confirmation of young men and women at the Catholic Church in Nandera this morning. Confirmation is a Catholic sacrament regarded as the perfection of baptism, where the baptized are more perfectly bound to the church and are enriched with special strength of the Holy Spirit. I ask you to remain steadfast in the journey of faith with a firm hope and faith in God, because this is the secret of our journey. He gives us the courage and the strength to swim against the tide, the tide of a world that is becoming very secular. Archbishop Peter Loy also cut the ribbons to the doors of the new priest house. This is to mark his first official visit as head of the Catholic Church to the Nandera Parish. More local business houses are now looking for opportunities outside of Fiji to expand their business. And the recent Melanesian Spearhead Group trade agreement is expected to help businesses here invest in neighboring countries. Shrutika Pratap reports. More businesses are gaining confidence with government's Buy Fiji Made initiative and the MSG trade agreement. Most of our major customers are looking to expand outside Fiji. They are seeing opportunities in the neighboring Pacific countries like PNG and Guanajuato and Solomon Islands and New Caledonia, which is fantastic for, for Fiji. So. There has been an increase in the applications for new loans by local businesses. An increase in business loans, so both in the commercial sector and the institutional sector. And clearly we have seen our portfolio growing in the last, uh, uh, last 12 months. So, so there, is, there is growth. Because some of the businesses are actually expanding, they are investing in new uh, factory and plant and warehouses and things like that. So they are overall, I mean that, that's, that's expected to happen as the businesses continue to focus on expanding outside Fiji. So Vishnu Mohan says the Trade Pacifica Expo in Fiji will open more doors for businesses. So I'm sincerely hoping that uh, 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 Fiji Pacifica in April next year will even result in uh, uh, will result in even more activity than 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 than, than you see today. 
Vishnu Mohan says the enthusiasm shown by the local business houses will help achieve the 3.2% growth forecasted for the Fijian economy for this year. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. As Delasui villages gather for a common cause. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on The Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Isambul Binaka, Pedango Wadi Sun in the Lai, Namakimani was sitting on a borota in a Lali Nekabi, my Natolu Kinabitu, and a morning digging a poor Rumbuka, and a Bula FM, Nabandu and a Serre. Welcome back to FBC News. Police are urging people to be cautious while handling flammable materials, especially when children are involved. The warning comes following an incident at Bemana village, Kayasi Singatoka, where two people sustained burns. The first victim was cleaning a generator fuel tank and while pouring the fuel into the generator, the basin containing the fuel suddenly caught fire. He then allegedly threw the basin out of the house, which landed on a six-year-old girl who also sustained burns. Both victims were taken to the Singatoka Hospital as investigations continue. The government continues its effort to make Fiji a knowledge-based society. This week, Education Minister Philippe Mboli launched the One Laptop Per Child program at Nandarivatu Primary School in Ra. Eleanor Turangai View reports. This best describes the atmosphere and excitement amongst the students of this school located up the interior of Rakiraki. Computer education leads to a variety of career paths which are in demand and the launching of the OLPC program at Nandarivatu is one of the keys to your future careers. And to mark the occasion, the community from Nandali, Nawai and Nambuesa villages completed and equipped the computer lab within three weeks. Everywhere we go to give the laptop, we tell the school committee if you don't take care of it, we will take the computer in the next one. I see this one is neatly done. The Fijian government had approved $1.3 million for the implementation of this ready-made resource for primary education. At present, 10 primary schools are using the One Laptop Per Child program and more schools will be on the program by the end of the year. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. Villagers of Dalasui in Namalat Talevu celebrated the blessing of the altar of their new church, which will be built soon. Their church that was built in 1975 was pulled down three months ago as it was too old. The Archbishop Emeritus Petero Matada was at Dalasui yesterday to conduct Mass and bless the place where the altar of the new church will stand. Vosita Kote Wasawasa reports. The village of Ndela Sui belonged to the Natovi Parish and villagers have been fundraising for the construction of the new church over the past four years. Fiji Day was a day in which villagers would gather and collect funds. For 70-year-old Maki Talena Bui, the celebration yesterday was significant to many. The old church was getting small for us, especially for our children. We are now blessed to be part of the ceremony here today. We have not seen it yet, but we know that it will be something beautiful. Alevo Sobuki says they are happy to see that work will soon get underway in the construction of the new church. I am happy to see all that took place uh, here today. We are relieved to be part of the construction. While officiating Mass, Archbishop Emeritus Petero Matada emphasized the need for people to be in touch with the Word of God. Always remain open to the Word of God. Always listen to the Word of God. Read the Word of God through your Bible, especially to your children. Villagers managed to raise $17,500 in their soli yesterday, and they hope to have the church ready by May next year. For Sitakote Masumasa, FBC News. And sports news ahead. All the action from the court's IDC. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this.
Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM Today Seat Music. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Welcome to FPC Sports. Ba has become the new court's inter-district champions. This after upsetting Nandi in extra time to win 2-1. Elena McDonald has more. The following through and Abu Zaid. Abu Zaid coming in the eighth minute of play, sneaks in, he races away. The bar fans jump in joy. The moment everyone was waiting for. Definitely very disappointed. Although Nandi took the early lead. The mistake of Ralulu not coming out. And William Etoma in the 15th minute of play has a penalty to Avinesh Swami allowed the men in black to equalize and move the game into extra time. On one nil, uh, told the boys, uh, told the boys, uh, you can still do it. And uh, in the second half, we came back. And uh, I would like to thank the players for their hard work. Nandi coach Kamal Swami has publicly stated his resignation from football after not agreeing with the referee's decision to allow the goal. Either way, it's celebrations for Bar tonight, which has not had the IDC title for five years. Elena McDonald, FPC Sports. The court's IDC semi-finals was a heartbreak for depending, defending champion Suva. A defensive blunder saw the ball bounce off Bar player Abu Zahid, who scored the winning lone goal of the match. In the second semi-final, Nandi overcame Lambasa thanks to a brilliant header from Uraya Loki. And just like the Super Premier Division, a new champion was crowned in the Premier grade today. And it came down to one winning goal for Tavuni to become the new Premier Division IDC champion. They beat fellow Northerners Draketi, scoring early in the first spell, then maintaining the lead until the final whistle. In other action at Churchill Park today, Ba won the primary school's IDC title. They defeated Lambasa Primary 1-0. It was sweet revenge for Ba, which lost to the Northerners earlier in the competition. Meanwhile, in the secondary school's final, Drasa Secondary defeated Saraswati College 2-1. The Digicel Fiji Sevens team will face either Wales or Kenya in the plate final of the Gold Coast Sevens tonight. This after a better attacking performance from the team, which saw them beat Samoa 31-26 in the plate semi. Earlier today, Fiji was bundled out of the cup quarters by England 26-12. England will now meet New Zealand in the cup semis, while Australia and South Africa are in the second semi-final. The countdown begins for the Vodafone Fiji Bati team to the Rugby League World Cup in England. They depart tomorrow morning and will engage in the long trip to Manchester, with two weeks to in Rochdale to prepare for their opener against Ireland. Elena McDonald spoke to young rookie Tiki Konoke, who is out to do his local teammates proud. Having had their first run together in Fiji on Friday night, the Fiji Bati will be using their final two weeks in England to get things right before their first World Cup encounter. And for this deputant who believes he's already living the dream after being selected, He's got a lot more to play for than just his family. It's been great. It's one of the best experience of my life, and yeah, I'm, I'm sharing a room with uh, our captain uh, Petro, and that's one of the best. That's that will be the best thing. It will be the most memorable thing I'll get to remember. Even before leaving our shores, he's already keeping note of his experiences. Being selected, it's not just. Only me. Uh, I'm just doing this for the resident boys. Uh, uh, they've they've very, they've been very helpful throughout the year. Uh, the big the uh, big boys are like Seva, Semisi, Sony, Osea, uh, Asel Sarvaki. They've all been very helpful. The Bati leaves for England tomorrow, where they will transit in Sydney before flying out to Abu Dhabi en route to Manchester, which totals 18 hours of travelling. No doubt, another experience for Tikiko who's out to do Fiji proud at just 19 years of age. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. And today while in Nandi, the Fiji Bati attended a special church service. 
Hosted at Sambetu Village this morning, Fiji Mbati head coach Rick Stone and his team received their blessings from all present. While also one last chance to meet up with Arden fans, the side also presented their itautau to the Tui Sambeto. <laughs> As predicted yesterday, fine weather was experienced across the country today. Nambasa maintains its lead on the temperature charts with 32 degrees. Suva and Savu Savu remain at the opposite end, being the coolest at 27 degrees at 4 this afternoon. Tomorrow's weather is expected to be the same, with sunshine for all major centres. Fine weather is also forecasted going into next week. However, a strong wind warning remains in force for northern Vanuwa waters, northern Lao waters, southwest Viti Lebu waters, and Yesawa waters, Kandabu and Batuira passages. The headlines again Deputy Director General of the European Commission's Director General for Development Corporation, EuropeAid, Marcus Canaro, is in the country for meetings with Fijian authorities. Our museum to be relocated. And Bao wins court's IDC 2013, beating Nandi by two goals to one. To the poll question now, we ask, will live EPL games li on FPC TV help develop local soccer? Visit www.fpc.com.fj to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj. Until next time, Mother Mother. सूरज की पहली किरण के साथ दिन की शुरुआत कीजिए सुबह का मंगल प्रभात आपको शुभ हो सुबह सुबह हो खुशियों का मेला ना लोगों की परवाह ना दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह 6 से लेकर 9 बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो आरोप हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, I've got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach lock-off time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on the ride, only on Gold FM.